Hello and welcome back to the channel. So I've tested the 10 most popular headphones between $50 and $150 to try and find out which one's the best, but also what offers the best price to performance. I bought all of these headphones myself, so this is not a sponsored video. I'm just generally curious to see where the best price to performance lies after getting so many different headphone recommendations over the years. So let's get right into it. I'm focused mostly on the performance whilst producing, mixing and mastering audio, so they've got to do a blend of everything right. And here is the lineup of the 10 headphones that I chose. I chose these 10 based on recommendations I've got from other people and my Discord, also based on headphones I know well, and also what were the highest rated headphones on Amazon for the different price. And I'll be giving away some of these headphones, so check the description to find out more about that giveaway. There were many stages of testing, but initially I just got them out of their boxes, checked the build quality, how comfortable they were, and an initial sound quality check. After the first impression, I let each headphone settle in, so I connected them to all my audio interfaces and headphone amps, and I played some audio through them for about four or five hours. It's really important with headphones that you let them burn in or settle in. For some reason, the sound when they're out of the box is not at all what they sound like after just running a few hours of audio through them. So I put some rock, pop, classical stuff through them, just a wide variety at different volumes, and then I went back into the rigorous testing stages where I was really trying to ignore the price. At this point, I'd forgotten what most of these headphones cost. There was just so many of them. Just checking them out for comfort, detail, sound stage. Did they have enough bass? Did they have enough top end? And I'll just start with my results for what I would buy for each price and then I'll break down each headphone, what I liked about it and what I didn't like. Let's start at the top of the budget. So if you have the full $150 to spend, there's only two headphones I'd buy. Firstly, the DT770 Pro. This is my top pick. I think they're the most comfortable and I think they offer the best sound stage. So not only do they have enough bass, it's really deep and extended and punchy, and they offer a ton of high detail, which you might have heard about these headphones. It's that the sound isn't too closed in on your head. So you hear them quite spacious around your head. You can hear each sound and that makes mixing easy. However, second is the Audio-Technica M50X. Some people need their headphones to fold up, which these do. And while these also offer a great sound profile with a ton of bass and a lot of high frequency detail, they are a much more closed in sound. So they're gonna feel more like the sound is inside your ear and inside your head. Whereas the 770 Pro sounds a little bit more spacious. You do get the sound in your head, but it also feels like it's around you as well, which is a soundstage I prefer. However, as I start sort of dissecting the other headphones and what I like and don't like about them, I would recommend that if you want the M50s, I would actually probably prefer the M40s because you save $40, you still get a ton of low end. In my opinion, they're just as comfortable, they're foldable, replaceable cable and all that, but the high end isn't quite as harsh. I feel the 50s over time could end up being a little bit fatiguing for my ears. Going down to the lower end of the budget, if you have about $50 to $80 to spend, there's again two pairs I'd recommend. So the Audio-Technica M30X is the first one I'd recommend. They're super comfortable, they're foldable, they sound great, they're not quite as balanced as the 40s or 50s. They isolate sound well, and the price to performance really did blow me away. However, I really did like the Bear Dynamic DT240 Pros. They're a little bit more slim. The ear cups sit just on top of my ears, so if you like headphones that sit on top of your ears and press in a little bit, I think these would be a great option, but I tend to prefer the ones that sort of encompass my entire ear, much like the 770 Pros. As promised, I'm going to now go through all the other headphones and explain why they didn't make the cut for me. At the bottom of the list was the AKG240 Mark II. These only have one redeeming quality to me, and that is that they are lightweight and comfortable, so I could wear them for probably hours and hours on end, but everything else about them was extremely disappointing. They lack bass, but they're also muddy, the high end feels really compressed, the sound stage isn't great, almost everything about them, including the build quality, just doesn't inspire confidence, and for the price, I'm really, really surprised that AKG put those out, but that's just my opinion. After I was done testing, I gave all of these headphones to my wife and I let her test them all out because she loves music, she's listening to music all day, 
and what she said these sounded like was the airplane like headset that you get maybe you're in economy or premium economy you got a pair of head headphones to listen to movies she said that's what this sounds like and i kind of agree although that might be a little bit harsh second from the bottom was the sony mdr 7506 I had quite high hopes for this because they seem to be really highly recommended. They're almost called the industry standard. People said the build quality was great, but I dislike almost everything about them. They're really plasticky. The build quality, I feel like I could just snap these if I, if I just applied a tiny bit of force. The cups were really uncomfortable and the sound stage was all over the place. There was a weird thumping low mid, but they were lacked bass and everything sounded compressed. Absolutely every drum, every pluck of a guitar string, there was no good transient response. And it's quite disappointing because I hear many reviewers call these very neutral and balanced headphones, but the sound profile of these was anything but balanced, even after letting them burn in, and they just seem to have no real depth of sound or any kind of nice character that I liked. Third from the bottom, was the Sennheiser HD 280 Pro. These were probably the most disappointing just because they're so expensive, but these do have one redeeming quality, which is that they isolate sound really well. So when these clamp onto your head, almost no sound escapes. So if you're recording, these are a great bet. However, on my head, the clamping force was far too much and I don't have a big head by any means. And also my wife immediately said that these just clamped really, really tightly on her ears. So maybe after a few weeks that would loosen up. I feel that the high end lacks a lot. There's just not a lot of volume in the high and extended high frequencies, which means that this could be great for what most people use them for, which is like vocal tracking and podcasting and listening to podcasts because you're not going to get a lot of harsh sibilance through to your ears, but you need to hear all that top end detail when you're mixing so these were not it for me around the middle of the list were the audio technica m20x's these were my first pair of pro studio headphones they perform exactly as i would expect for the money they're decent build quality is nice the only thing i'd say is that the pads on them be prepared to replace these me and thousands of other users uh, and many people in my discord have uh, the pads just fall to pieces after a year or two I don't know whether it's because I wasn't washing them correctly, maybe I was washing them too much or something, but for some reason these pads just flake and fall to pieces. But if you don't mind replacing them after a year or two, that shouldn't be a problem. However, if you've saved up about $45 to buy these, I would strongly, strongly recommend waiting a little bit, save up just a little bit more, and get the 30Xs. These perform so much better than expected for the price, and the difference between the 20s and the 30s is a massive difference in soundstage. So much more bass, so much more detail, and far more comfortable. Right in the middle is the DT240. These again sort of performed as expected. They do have quite a nice build quality, really punchy, a lot of low and mid focus, but there is also a high end. It's just not extremely extended as you'd expect with the other DT headphones. So this one doesn't have the same sound signature as say the 770, 880 or 990. These are definitely in their own category. The next one was the AKG K702 headphones. Now I actually tried these on in a music shop uh, many years ago or, or a pair similar to this and I found the same experience when I tried them on again here. There's just no bass. The extreme sub information is simply missing. They sound really wide. They're extremely comfortable, very lightweight and they don't overheat on your ears. There's so much about them that I like but there are elements in arrangements, uh, which I hear in every other headphone, and I can't even perceive them in these headphones, which means that they didn't make it for my cut. But if you don't like bass, if you're really sensitive to bass and you just want to listen to music, enjoy really detailed mids and highs, a great and spacious soundstage and great transient response, sort of no compression of the high end, I would recommend them. But for me, I really love bass. I need to hear all of that sub and low end uh, material, which I just didn't get from these. I actually let these ones burn in for far longer and they still didn't develop any of that bass that I wanted. The remaining headphones on the list were the Audio-Technica 30s, 40s, 50s, and the DT770 Pros, which we've also sort of talked about. But on top really was the DT770 Pros for me.
For more information about all of the headphones and a few more notes about maybe the sound stage, do check the description. I tend to put a lot of information in there in each video. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to my Discord for some of the recommendations on the headphones. I hope this helps steer you in the right direction. And remember that often with headphones, they can sound better with a bit of age, so you don't need to buy any of these new. I would highly recommend checking the used market, but maybe or almost definitely buy some replacement ear pads because if you get a pair of these used, you can just buy the uh, ear cups again. You pull these off, put them on. You can also wash them, but I'd recommend you know getting some clean ones for yourself. There's not really a need to buy a ton of new equipment. I know I just did that for this review, but I am giving all of these away to people that need them. But used equipment's great. You'll save quite a bit of money and that way you'll get an even better price to performance. But thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.